Just because I said you're going to Pollyanna's doesn't mean you gotta freak out. You're freaking out! You're going to Pollyanna's? Do you wanna to go too? Well, good morning, Lionhearts. It's a beautiful day here in Zamunda. I just woke up and really slept in. It's like 10.30 and never sleep in that late, but basically, with the new camera phone, um, I'm filming on 60 frames per second and it takes so much longer to transfer the files and to make the final video of the day. Normally when I could actually like edit the thing and every and by the time I was ready to edit it and have it finished and upload it, it would take about a half an hour to upload onto YouTube and now it takes about two and a half hours. So I don't know why, but that's been the case the last three days. So it's taken a little bit longer time and so the vlog hasn't been posted at midnight like it normally is. And I'm sleeping in because of that, so that's that. I decided to bring this dude out for a little bit of a walk and a little bit of a change of scenery. We're at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh yeah, look at that terrible view that I have to endure while I'm over here. Ah, oh. so beautiful it almost makes you sick, doesn't it? Well, gang, I figured out what I'm going to go vlog, so I'm going to drop Jaw off. Uh, he's going to go play today, and I am going to go do kind of a bizarre story. Um, a famous Mexican actress of the 1930s committed suicide in 1944 and did it in a very bizarre way and left a suicide note, but some don't actually believe that what she said in the suicide note was the reason that she killed herself. So I'm going to go tell you that story today. This is a restaurant called The Griddle that always has a lion going outside. Well, today we're gonna talk about one of the most beautiful women of the 1920s and 30s, all the way up into the 40s, named Lupe Velez. She was born in Mexico and actually had immigrated to the United States in the 20s, started doing vaudeville theater, and soon made her way into silent movies. By the end of the silent movie era, she was a star. She was performing in movies like Gaucho and made the successful transition, obviously because of her looks, as you've seen the picture already. She made the successful transition into talking pictures. and. They deemed her as the Mexican Spitfire, the, uh, the hot tamale. And it wasn't just because of her looks, it was actually, she was known to have a pretty fiery temper. She had a lot of well-known love affairs with Errol Flynn, John Gilbert. She was married to Johnny Weissmuller, Tarzan. Um, from 1933 to 1939 and even when they were married there were reports in the media all the time about physical fights they would have and basically what ended up happening was in 1944 she decided to commit suicide. She was a staunch Roman Catholic, had become pregnant with who she claimed was Harold Raymond's child. Apparently Harold Raymond had told her that he was only going to marry her to give the baby a name because Lupe and Harold had so many fights they just had decided that it wasn't going to work out. And so one night after hanging out with friends, having dinner, at about 3.30 a.m. Lupe swallowed 75 second all sleeping pills and a glass of brandy, put on a flower trim dress, lay down on her bed so the story goes, and died. And we're at the house where she died in. Now in 1944, Lupe was found dead in this house on her bed with a suicide note attached. And before that note was attached, the coroner actually thought there might be foul play involved. But her suicide note pretty much gave all confirmation. It said, to Harold, may God forgive you and forgive me too, but I prefer to take my life away and our babies before I bring him with shame or killing him, Lupe. And then when you flipped over to the other side, it said, 
How could you, Harold, fake such a great love for me and our baby when all the time you didn't want us? I see no other way out for me, so goodbye and good luck to you, love, Lupe. Now, Harold Raymond, after her death, did admit that he had done what she said, or done what I've already told you, which was she had, or he had told her that he was willing to marry her even though they weren't in love, even though they knew it wasn't gonna work out, just to give the baby a name. And some have actually reported since her death that the last couple of years of her life, she exhibited signs of bipolar. So maybe that, they said, had something to do with it, but there's a little bit more to the story. Some people believe that Harold Raymond wasn't even the father of the baby. Lupe had always had a long, on again, off again relationship with Gary Cooper that also would get pretty physical sometimes. And by this point, Gary Cooper had already married someone, a wealthy socialite. And some believe that Lupe was trying to save face for Gary Cooper in his career. When she found out she was pregnant and realized that Gary wasn't going to have a part in the life, she started dating Harold Raymond and wanted Harold to marry her. And when he realized it wasn't going to work out and decided not to, this sent her into a tailspin. Now, a little bit of the evidence that kind of supports this is there was a journalist who interviewed Lupe a few weeks before her death, and he claims that she confided in him that the baby was Gary Cooper's. Um, the same reporter journalist also said that he interviewed Gary Cooper years later and Gary Cooper confirmed that it was possible that the baby could have been his. Now, kind of the last nail in the coffin was the, an interview with Clara Bow, who used to date Gary Cooper as well, and she said that one of the conversations that she had with Gary Cooper, he called her screaming over the phone about how he was going to kill Harold Raymond for impregnating Lupe, and that Clara Bow said she had always, always thought that the baby was actually Gary Cooper's. So I guess we will actually never really know. The theory possibly could be heartbroken over, you know, as I said, she was Roman Catholic and to have an abortion was absolutely out of the question. And also to have a baby born out of wedlock was also a major embarrassment to her. So this is the house where Lupe Velez was found dead. But I just thought this was such a fascinating story from a woman who was such a pioneer in the sexy Latina of early Hollywood. She was kind of the, I guess you'd say Sofia Vergara of her time, or the, the first Sofia Vergara, but she was known for having a, relationships with everyone from Clark Gable to, like I said, Gary Cooper, John Gilbert. The list was endless. And uh, she was also known for being kind of an exhibitionist when she would go to uh, the Palm Springs Racquet Club. She was known for uh, taking off her suit and skinny dipping while guests were present. She was also known for um, going out dancing and while she was dancing she would lift up her skirt and flash people. She was also known, like I said, she was known for kind of having a fiery temper. She supposedly used to get into fights with Gary Cooper and chase him around with a knife and it actually cut him deep enough one point where he needed stitches. And I probably will do a whole vlog on the relationship of Lupe and Gary Cooper at some point. But I just thought this was such a sad story that I wanted to share with you. A woman torn between who might very well have never known who the father of her baby was. Lupe had even told a friend that her last night alive when she was out having that last meal that she'd rather die than have her baby born out of wedlock and without a father. When Lupe died, they had a funeral for her in Forest Long Glendale and then put her body on a train and they had a memorial for her in Mexico as well before I believe finally burying her in Forest Long Glendale. Sad story.
Now what's fascinating is that Lupe lived here throughout the 30s and all the way up till her death. And her neighbor across the street at that time would have been Joe Kennedy. This is the house that Joe Kennedy and Gloria Swanson were kind of having their affair in. This was his base of operations in those days. And this is just a little bit of a corner shot of the property. Kind of show you a little bit more of it. Those even look like those could be the uh, original lights. Oh, cool. What's up, Statue Zoo? Awesome. Oh, what a bummer. I just saw that um, both George Romero and Martin Landau died today. Martin Landau won an Oscar playing Bela Lugosi and Ed Wood. And George Romero directed Day of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Night of the Living Dead. Um, just a real pioneer in the uh, zombie genre of movies that I grew up with. So sad to see them both go. There's that creepy Tales from the Crypt looking stump. Man. Oh, speaking of Tales from the Crypt, I'm gonna be doing a Tales from the Crypt vlog here pretty soon. Love Tales from the Crypt. All of it, like the comics, the series, the movies, loved it all. Man, this alleyway is just begging to be in a movie. I've been trying to find the locations for this old John Ritter and Jim Belushi movie I used to watch when I was a kid with my dad called Real Men. I can't really find any definitive locations, so I have to keep working on it. This kind of reminds me of the, uh, the scene where they're fighting the clowns, the undercover officer clowns. The things you miss when you're not filming. I'm walking back from the grocery store and I wasn't filming and I hear somebody screaming and I turn around and look and it's like two people in the middle of a road rage and it's a girl just going nuts. The guys that are in front of her drive off and she just guns it chasing after him like whipping around. Yeah, baby photo bomb. And uh, too bad you guys missed that. But I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night because I have some plans tonight, guys. And uh, I just wanted to thank all the new people that keep finding it every day and are watching and all the people that find it uh, in their hearts to make me a part of their day every single day. You're making me one step closer to my goal. Have a great night. From Hollywood, California, goodbye.